Hi! Today I'm going to demonstrate for you a lovely handmade card using the new Stampin' Up! Magnolia Bloom stamp set. It was just released on June 4th, 2019. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, I have been through the 2019-2020 Stampin' Up! catalog page by page over and over and I didn't see it in there. Well, that's because it isn't. And I'm going to show you where you can find it. What you may not know is there's a supplement to the new annual catalog, and that's the 2019-2020 Beginner's Brochure. That's where you'll find the Magnolia Bloom stamp set. I'm Shelley Godby, the owner and CEO of Stamping Smiles, and for 18 years I've been teaching others how to create their own hand stamp smiles. So while they had the beginner stamper in mind when they designed the Magnolia Bloom stamp set, avid stampers will love it too. Here's a closer view of the Magnolia Bloom stamp set, and the only place you'll find it is in here, the 2019-2020 Stampin' Up! Beginner's Brochure. So even though the stamp sets and projects in here were designed with new stampers in mind, they're available for all of us. And wait till you have a peek inside. Okay, so let's get started. The first item we have that's exclusive to this brochure is the Looking Up Card Kit with four different designs. Cute, cute, cute. And then we have the Delightful Day stamp set with the Delightful Day tags. So I want to show you something. Normally we're used to looking down here for the item number and the price. In this brochure, um, what you'll find is the bundled items for the projects that you see. So we have the Delightful Day tags, which will include all of these items. Okay, so you can purchase that. Or if you have some of these items, you may already have the Pretty Peacock uh, Classic Stampin' Pad. The item number and the price for each one is listed individually. Okay, so let's turn. And then we have, here we go, our Magnolia Bloom stamp set. Again, the item number and price is up here, but you can get all of this bundled together with Magnolia Lane cards. Very nice. They did a good job laying this out for new stampers. And oh, how cute celebrate with cake. <laughs> oh my goodness, that little bird and these samples are just adorable as all get out. And then we have hoot hoot hooray. <laughs> now the stamp sets in here that I'm showing you are pictured at actual size. So stinking cute. Can't wait to get my hands on this one too. Okay, so there we go. And then they have some other items. So, um, interestingly, yesterday when I was looking through my online store, the, I could only find one of the stamp sets pictured in my online store. Now, if I put them in by item number, I could find them, but they weren't pictured with all the stamp sets. So, I'll have a link to my blog post with all of these pictured. Okay, so here we go. Now, this was exciting because the Good Morning Magnolia stamp set in the annual catalog has been a huge hit and uh, and this coordinates with it and I thought oh look at that happy birthday and thank you if that was the same thought as good morning or same font as good morning um, Magnolia I would be thrilled well guess what it is so here we go look this is an ex it can be used by itself but a great extension to good morning magnolia because we have hello thanks thinking of you and now we'll have thank you and happy birthday oh 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 and i got to show you something else that's not a coincidence all right so it also coordinates with the gorgeous magnolia lane designer series paper well look at this Let me pull this out from under here this magnolia well here it is oh, oh oh and then this side view well it's on this paper how cool is that so if you already have the good morning magnolia bundle you'll definitely want to add magnolia blooms and uh and but again it's available to order by itself New catalogs are so much fun because there are always so many new great products to discover, like the Shimmer Black Stampin' Emboss Powder. Let's have a look. <gasps> Can you see that? Look at that black Stampin' Emboss Powder that shimmers. Mm -mm -mm. I thought, ooh, I've got to use that on my Magnolia Blooms card. So we're ready to start. And what I have here is some Whisper White Thick cardstock. So whenever you emboss, the very first thing you want to do is get out your embossing buddy and rub all over. 
Now this is the award-winning embossing putty. When Stampin' Up! came out with this for I think about five years in a row, it kept winning an award in a scrapbooking magazine and it's wonderful. So what that does is we have natural oil in our hands and it's really easy for the embossing powder to stick to that. And that's not ideal. <laughs> that's not the look we're going for. We want the embossing powder to stick only to the image, which will be our magnolia and you can see this is a photopolymer stamp set so the rubber is clear and what I want to stick to is this nice juicy ink uh, the Versamark ink it's a pigment ink and it stays wet longer okay which is ideal for embossing so we'll come over here and stamp approximately in the center so the Versamark ink it's not all that impressive to see it just stamped because it's a watermark stamp and what that means um, it puts a watermark on there a shade or two darker so right now you really can't see anything but you will in just a moment so what I have here is just an ordinary paper plate and our new shimmer black embossing powder I'll sprinkle this on and this is my actually my favorite part of embossing is the reveal when it sticks like that like oh my goodness so the embossing buddy did a fabulous job um, and all I have is one little piece over here so something I discovered yesterday uh, when I was wiping it off it was smearing do you see that I thought oh I couldn't just wipe off the black but what did work for me Stampin' Up! used to carry this adhesive eraser and I don't want to touch the image I want to get it off before I emboss and I was able to remove that so um, Sam doesn't care anymore but thankfully I was able to find them in Amazon and I'll have a link under the video for you to that okay so right now you can see a little bit of the shimmer in there but oh does it come out when we melt it and we're going to melt it with the heat tool the heat tool is very nice you have this protection so I mean if I put my hand down in there but you have this to protect you and uh, it has two settings the first one is for drying ink and the second one here's the first one and the second one is for melting embossed powder so what you do is you hold it and keep your fingers out of the way because this is really intense heat you hold it until you see it start to melt and once it's there we go and with this that's what really brings out the shimmer oh that's how you can tell it's melted look at that oh, oh oh and once you get it started it takes a little bit just to, but then it just goes really quickly there we go this is really very obvious that it's melted okay and if you ever see you know you you go ahead and melt it with your heat tool and you notice something powdery you can always go back and dry it later but look can you is the camera catching the shimmer uh 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 I am just crazy about this okay so uh, what we're gonna do is die cut this I'm gonna grab my die cutting machine and show you how to do that I've got my Big Shot die cutting machine and I'll be using the magnetic platform that's an additional purchase for a die cutting machine but I just love it because it holds dies in place while I'm die cutting so then I need a cutting pad and then we have the cardstock we just embossed and I'll be die cutting with the layering circles dies okay so we want this one there we go and center it around and see how the magnetic platform is holding that in place because I, I do want it to be centered just like that and then while I'm doing it I have some basic black cardstock okay and we'll be using this scallop circle die to go with this all right so I'll just do them both at the same time place a cutting pad on top and that finishes what we call a sandwich and crank it through okay and so then that does all the die cutting for us and it's a beautiful beautiful thing because these dies save us from needing to try to cut out a perfect circle we're going to watercolor to add a bit of color and so that's why I chose the Whisper White Thick cardstock. It has that same great tight 
finish for crisp clean images as the Whisper White cardstock, but it's a little bit thicker so it'll hold up to the water better. And so I'm going to start with Petal Pink. Now magnolias are white, but even when we have a snowman we like to add a little bit of color to make them stand out better. So if it was a snowman I would use Crumb Cake or Smoky Slate. Um, I'm going to use Petal Pink for two reasons. One because it's pretty, but it's also in the designer paper that we're coordinating with this, the Magnolia Lane, and so it just looks really pretty. All right, so what we do when you watercolor, you press down on it, and we're pressing the pad into the lid to get some ink up in here, okay? And, you know, if that's hard for you, well, for one, with these new pads, go from the side. That's another tip. But if it's hard for you, you can always take the ink refill and uh, squirt some inside. So I thought, well, if it if it did, if it dripped under the pad, which I've never seen, it always seems to cling. It would just re-ink the pad, no harm. Okay, so I I just felt myself touch something. So I'm wiping my hand on my stamping sleeves because I don't want to smudge this. I've already done my embossing and die cutting, so my stamping sleeves will prevent that. So we're going to watercolor with an aqua painter. Love these things. Before we had these, and we've had these for, oh, forever, but we had watercolor brushes and controlling the water was really difficult. I'd either have too much or not enough. This controls it for you. So what you do, my stamping sleeves come in handy for this, squeeze it, okay, to get it going, wipe off the excess, and then I'm going to come over here and pick up a little bit of color. And I want this to be nice and soft. So we'll just come in here and add like it like you would do with a snowman. So where I'm coloring is where there would naturally be the the petal above it would shade the one underneath. So that's where we're adding the color. That'll make it look natural. And Stampin' Up helps you too by showing you like right here where there would be shading as well. So that's really light, but that's on purpose. I just want that hint. Very pretty. Okay, so we are done with that. So we'll pull on that, and you hear that click, you're done, and a quick swipe. Now, then our next color, Mossy Meadow. So again, press. Oh, there we go. And I push this in a little bit, so it's not, well, not quite that much, but I don't want it flopping around on me quick swipe on my stamping sleeves. I'll have a link to um, under the video where you can pick some up. So we're changing colors. So we need to clean. So squeeze till water comes off, wipe off the excess, and then, and see this is still wet. So I'll pull some color over here because I want it to be more diluted. I don't want it to be quite that dark. And embossing and watercoloring is really nice because uh, the embossed lines help keep your color where you want it. All right, so I put down what I call a light wash. Now let's come over here and pick up just a little bit of this darker and follow the lines on our leaves and give that some variation and depth. There we go. Oh, looking good. So when you're done, squeeze one more time, finish wiping off, and then you're ready the next time. And so to close this, pull. There we go. All right. So what I want to do is layer this onto my basic black circle. And let me get some color behind me so you can see. Well, to make that go quicker, I have one already layered for us. But isn't that pretty? Mm, mm, mm. So here I've got this pattern from the Magnolia Lane Designer Series paper. And we're going to do this. So I'm going to place this. So I have my placement because I'm going to stamp my greeting right on my designer paper, my pattern paper. And what I'm going to use is a Tuxedo Black Momento ink pad. Here we go with Thank You from our Magnolia Bloom stamp set in this beautiful font. So we're giving this oh, a good inking. Here we go. Come down over here into the corner. And with it being photopolymer, I can see through it. I know that it's lined up. Oh, very nice. This was light enough, this petal pink striped paper, for that to show up. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's use our snail adhesive. 
Here we go. SNAIL stands for Super Neat Affordable Inline Adhesive. There may or may not be a test later. So put your finger where the ridges are and put down about an inch in each corner is great. If you go nice and slow like a snail, you get a great line of adhesive. All right, so here we go. Oh, looking good edge to edge. And then look how finished that looks on basic black. Mm -mm -mm. So that's the opposite side. I use the two sides, so about an inch in each corner. And the snail adhesive is great when everything is flat. You know, there's nothing between these layers. Uh, we don't have any ribbon or brads or anything, any you know, embossing, any texture to keep that from being perfectly flat. Oh, there. Mm -mm -mm. And then we'll put this on. Now I had it just flat and this little tip, it just really dressed it up. It changed the whole thing and that was Stampin' Dimensionals. I don't know how foam adhesive dots can make such a difference, but it sure did. I mean, I know what it usually does, but I thought, hmm, I'll just put it on flat and I had to take it off <laughs> and get out my Stampin' Dimensionals. I, I admit it, I'm a Stampin' Dimensionals addict. Okay, so press down with your thumbnail and what that does, it makes the edge, that paper, just um, lifts it up so it's easier to grab. Okay, and look, mm -mm -mm, that gorgeous paper with that beautiful font and all this. I put this on here again with dimensionals. I did basic black, but I'll show you why I chose basic black and that's because I put ribbon around it. Oh, look at this. The petal pink 5 8 inch organdy striped ribbon. Doesn't that finish it off? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'll have a link to my blog post with all of the measurements for my Magnolia Blooms card in case you'd like to make it too. And uh, beautiful it is. And so, and then remember, I'll have a, on that same blog post, you'll be able to find all the products that are exclusive to the beginner's brochure. So you can see them and have the item numbers to find them in my online store. If you'd like to make my lovely handmade card with the new Magnolia Bloom stamp set, all the supplies are listed below the video and available to order now in my online store, www.shopwithshelly.com. I'm Shelly Godby, teaching you how to create hand stamp smiles. Thanks for watching.